Every Sunday on GRTS, it's a live program organized by the Gambia Christian Council in the Church Interfaith Subcommittee under the auspices of um, uh, joint collaboration with Gambia Radio and Television Services. Every Sunday, this program comes your way at this time for one hour. It's a program whereby we discuss and uh, search scriptures, make references to the Bible, and talk about issues that concern the Christian faith and uh, also the issue that concerns Christianity. We are here this evening, and today our topic will be on, we will discuss on forgiveness and reconciliation, which is very interesting and important during this period of Lent. We will talk about forgiveness and reconciliation, definition for forgiveness, what is reconciliation, what the Bible talks about it, the examples we have in the Bible, in the scriptures, regarding our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and other, you know, sites, citing other examples um, uh, that took place, stories in the Bible, and why should it be, why Christ, how Christ, what limit is it to forgiveness and reconciliation, and that is what we are doing this evening. We will discuss for a while, and then halfway through the program, we will take a short music break, and we, when we come back, we'll open up the telephone lines for your comments, contributions, and questions. And um, we also um, encourage you to send us your comments, questions, and contributions on email. Our email address is um, talkonchristianity at gmail.com. But for now, we want to go straight into the topic for tonight, which is forgiveness and reconciliation. With me in the studios to discuss this very important topic during this period of Lent is I start from my right. On my right, I have uh, Brother Lawrence, Deacon Lawrence Jar, National Director for Scripture Union, The Gambia. Brother Lawrence Jar, you are welcome to talk on Christianity. Thank you. Can I and on my left, we have uh, Reverend Junisa from the Methodist Mission. Reverend Junisa, you are welcome to talk on Christianity, sir. Thank you very much. And indeed, on my, my own very self, my humble self, the Reverend Canon Jimmy Cole from the Anglican Mission. Dear viewers, please stay tuned, and I'm sure you will be blessed in Jesus' name. Without wasting any more time, we turn to Reverend Junisa to give us a definition of forgiveness. A definition of forgiveness. Well, forgiveness is defined as the act of stopping to blame or being angry mm. with someone for something he has done wrong. The act of stopping to blame. You don't blame the person any longer, then you are not going to, be, to continue to be angry with the person because he has done something to you. Mm -hmm. So you forget completely about blaming him. You stop blaming the person and you don't remember the wrong that the person has done you. Okay. All right. Having got that definition for forgiveness there, I want to pick one word there, which is forget. Mm -hmm. It's important to forget. And as human beings, you know, we are not perfect. We always have, we have a brain and we have the tendency to remember things from time to time. Mm. But to forget is part of forgiveness. You know, sometimes we hear people say, I forgive you, but I not forget. Mm -hmm. I forgive, but I will never forget what you have done to me. You know, now it is the power of the Holy Spirit, by the grace of God, that we will be able to forget the wrong that has been meted against us, you know, even when we forgive. And the scripture reference that we want to look at this evening is Luke chapter 6, verses 27 to 36. Luke 6, 27 to 36. This is our main to uh, reading for tonight, dealing with love and forgiveness, mm. reconciliation. He says, but I tell you, this is Jesus speaking, I tell you who hear me, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, mm. and pray for those who will ill-treat you. 
If anyone hits you on the cheek, let him hit the other one too. Mm -hmm. If anyone takes your coat, let him have your sword as well. Give to everyone who asks you for something. Do not take it back. Do for others just what you want them to do, do for you. For you. If you love the, only the people who love you, why should you receive a blessing? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good only to those who do good to you, why should you receive a blessing? Even sinners do that. And if you lend only to those from whom you hope to get back, why should you receive a blessing? <coughs> Even sinners lend to sinners to get back the same amount. No. Love your enemies, mm. says Jesus. Mm -hmm. And do good to them. Lend and expect nothing back. You will then have a great reward. And you will be sons of the Most High God. Mm. For he is good to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful just as your Father yeah. is merciful. merciful. Thank you, sir. Reverend Junisa, it said, be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Yeah. We, in other words, we have to meet out mercy, forgiveness, you know, even to those who hate us, even to our enemies. You know, we, we, what the, the long and short of that passage is telling us that I don't have to be nice to, 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 to Dikinja because he is nice to me. No. Yes, I can do that, fine. But what about if he is not nice to me? Does it mean that I should not be nice to him as well? You see, that is what the passage is telling us here in short. Forgiveness and being for, for forbearing, forgiveness and reconciliation. Be nice to people all the time, those who like you. In fact, in this world, you don't expect everybody to like you. No. It's not possible. Some will love you, some will hate you, some will like you, some will dislike you. You know, and that is what Jesus is telling us. And this is what leads us to the other, you know, topic, the top other question that we want to ask ourselves and talk about it this evening, and that is this. Jesus' example of forgiveness that we will turn to Dick and Jar to, to, to give us a brief a summary of um, uh, Jesus' example of forgiveness. And I think he's going to take that from Luke chapter 23, verse 34. Luke chapter 23, verse 34. And uh, over to you, Dick and Jar. Yes, Luke 23, 34 reads, mm -hmm. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Mm -hmm. From this statement of Jesus, it gives us a clear picture of Jesus being a model of somebody who forgives. Yes. Before this period, Jesus was already hanging at the cross of Calvary mm -hmm. with two criminals. And in spite of all the atrocities that were meted out against him, Jesus could have prayed against his enemies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He could have used any abusive terms. He could have used any other language. No. But the Bible says he prayed, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they do. Mm -hmm. Jesus is not like others who would say, do as I say, not as I do. Mm. He had said it as we read in Luke 6, 27 to 36, the principles behind forgiveness. Mm. And now having said, said those principles, he himself now goes out to carry out the principle itself by actually forgiving his enemies even at the point at the cross of Calvary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What a model mm. for you and for me. Indeed, mm. indeed. What a model for you and for me. That's a very interesting question, you know, because if you look at all what was meted against him, mm. 
to the extent of, you know, being